Hi pals, this is the Science Chef. In this video, you will be learning about the general principles of naming organic compounds. Please don't leave this channel and we'll be right back in an instant. Welcome back. Before we continue, let's answer some basic questions like what are organic compounds? Organic compounds are compounds of carbon other than its oxides, carbides, some carbonates and cyanides formed based on the catenating property of carbon. Catenation is the ability of an element to bond with itself to form straight and branch chains and rings. The next question is, what is IUPAC nomenclature? IUPAC is an acronym for the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Wild nomenclature means naming. Therefore, IUPAC nomenclature is the systematic naming of organic compounds based on certain rules established by the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. The name of a typical organic compound follows the general formula prefix plus root plus suffix. The suffix is obtained from the principal functional group present in the compound. A functional group is an atom or group of atoms or bonds that makes an organic compound behave the way it does. It is what defines a homologous series or family of organic compounds. The table on the screen shows some functional groups with their corresponding homologous series and suffixes. The root is obtained from the number of carbon atoms present in the longest or parent chain of the molecule. The numbers of carbon atoms and their corresponding root names are met for one carbon, et for two carbon atoms, probe for three carbon atoms, and boot for four carbon atoms. From five to ten carbon atoms, we use the pattern for naming polygons, that is, pent, hex, hept, oct, and so on. The prefix is obtained from the substituents, which are majorly alkyl groups. A substituent is any other atom or carbon-containing group of atoms, which is not part of the parent chain. Alkyls are groups of atoms with the general molecular formula CnH2n plus 1, where n is greater or equal to 1. The list of alkyls and their names are as seen on the screen. These names make up the prefixes in the nomenclature of most organic compounds. Other atoms or groups of atoms with their corresponding prefixes are chloro for chlorine, fluoro for fluorine, iodo for iodine, hydroxo for OH, etc. Having known how to derive the different parts of the name of an organic compound, let's now look at the rules to be followed when naming aliphatic organic compounds by naming the following compounds. 1. Identify the functional group in the molecule and that will be your suffix. From examples, compound A has no functional group so it must be an alkane with the suffix A-N-E. B has a double bond so it is an alkene with the suffix E-N-E. C contains a triple bond which makes it an alkyne with the suffix Y-N-E, that's ine and D possesses a carboxylic group and this makes it an alkanoic or carboxylic acid with the suffix oic acid. Number two, identify the parent chain by looking for the longest continuous carbon to carbon chain bearing the functional group in any direction. And when I say any direction, I mean horizontally, vertically or diagonally. Though horizontal is always most preferable. The number of carbon atoms in that chain will form the roots. From my examples, the longest carbon to carbon chain in compound A contains five carbon atoms, so its roots will be pent. While in B, the longest carbon chain bearing the functional group contains six carbon atoms, giving it the root hex. In compound C, the longest chain bearing the functional group contains seven carbon atoms, giving it a root name hept and in D, the longest carbon chain with the carboxylic group contains four carbon atoms, so the root is boot. Number three, number the parent chain in a direction that will assign the lowest possible number to the carbon bearing the functional group. If there is no specialized functional group, then that priority 
should be given to the carbon to which the substituent is attached. In our examples, since there is no special functional group in compound A, the substituent will take the priority. So we will adopt the direction that will give the lowest possible number to the carbon to which the substituent is attached. And that is from left to right. In B, we will number it in a direction that will give the first carbon bearing the double bond the lowest possible number. Given the structure of the compound, the double bond is symmetrically positioned. So numbering from both sides gives the carbons bearing the double bond the numbers 3 and 4, with 3 being the lower value. At this point, the actual direction to follow will be the one that assigns the lowest pair of values to the substituents, which are 2 and 4, as against 3 and 5. In compound C, numbering from right to left gives the first carbon bearing the triple bond the lowest possible number, which is 2. Compound D can only be numbered in one direction, that is, from right to left, because the carboxylic group is the terminal functional group and the numbering starts from the carboxylic group carbon atom. So the functional group carbon is always the first carbon. A terminal functional group is one that occurs at the end of the chain in an organic molecule. Number four, indicate any other atom not part of the parent chain as substituents and name them by adding prefixes to their names to show their positions on the carbon chain. In compound A, there are six carbon atoms. Of these six, five make up the parent chain, so the only one remaining will be the substituent. The group of atoms that make up the substituent is CH3, so it is a methyl group attached to the second carbon atom, so it will form the prefix 2 methyl. In compound B, there are a total of 8 carbon atoms in the molecule, out of which 6 form the parent chain and 2 make up the substituent. The two carbon atoms form a methyl group H and are attached to the second and fourth carbon atoms. In compound C, there are 9 carbon atoms in the molecule. Of these, 7 form the parent chain while two are methyl substituents attached to the fourth and fifth carbon atoms. In compound D, apart from the four carbon atoms that make up the parent chain, there is no other carbon atom. This means that it has no substituent and consequently will have no prefix. Number five, if a particular substituent appears more than once, then the multiplying prefixes di, tri, tetra are used to acknowledge the number of units of such substituents. From compounds B and C, the methyl substituent appears more than once, so in addition to their positional numbers, the multiplying prefix di will be attached to the name. Therefore, the appropriate prefix for compound B is 2,4-dimethyl, while that for compound C is 4,5-dimethyl. Number 6 and the last. If there are more than one type of substituent present in the molecule of the organic compound, they are named in alphabetical order irrespective of their positions. Note that the multiplying prefixes do not affect the alphabetical order. Let's assume that there is a fluorine atom attached to the third carbon atom in compound B. This means that the molecule has two alkyl groups and a halo group as substituents. Taking the alphabetical order into consideration, the correct arrangement of the prefix is 3 fluoro 2,4 dimethyl. When we combine the prefixes, roots, and suffixes of each compound, we obtain the names 2 methyl pentane for compound A, 3 fluoro 2,4 dimethyl hex 3 in for compound B, 4 5 dimethyl hex 2 ine for compound C, and butanoic acid for compound D, named after the pattern of its homologous series, alkanoic acid. Acid. Note that in writing the names of the compounds, numbers are separated with a comma, while numbers and letters are separated with a dash, and there is no spacing in between the prefix, root, and suffix, except in the alkanoic acid. In our next video, we will be looking at the detailed IOPAC nomenclature of the alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. So make sure you keep a date. 
If you enjoyed this lesson, like, share this video, leave your comments and follow us on our social media platforms. Thanks for watching and always stay safe.